In this example, I've got my page hosted on a particular website, 59.261, and I'm going to try and access the data that's hosted on a different server. Technically, it's still my box, but I'm using a different server name. You'll see what happens when I try and refresh the pages. I get a note from Internet Explorer that is trying to access information not under its control. So if I say yes, everything works great, but not exactly the experience you want your users to have. And the reason that's happening is I'm using a different name here to simulate calling out to a different server. And it really depends on the client's settings as to whether or not that's going to be allowed. They're prompted. Nothing happens. Uh, you may just see that the data doesn't show up. No errors. Nothing. Uh, a lot of cases, the requests just don't get made. And so that's why we need some support for this cross-site querying. When you're working with OData, this works for querying. You're able to go out and make requests and pull back data using a mechanism called JSONP or JSON with padding, but you're not going to be able to use that for, uh, for supplying the data or posting data. So if we look at the, the raw jQuery model, I'll show you both here. Uh, what we do is when we make these JSON requests, so at the beginning here I'm calling get JSON, I've got my standard bit of information here that I want, my query parameters, and the service I'm calling has been set up to support these additional parameters. So here I'm passing in format equals JSON and callback equals question mark. This is supported both by jQuery and as I said by my service. So when jQuery sees this callback equals question mark in a get JSON call, it's going to take this method name and and replace the question mark so we'll see the uh, format equals JSON and callback equals process results and it's also going to then uh, under the covers set up the Ajax call this is really just a wrapper for the Ajax function it's going to set it up with a data type of JSON P and what that means is we'll get back our JSON but it'll be wrapped in a method call in this case called process results so as soon as it pulls that back down basically as a script file it will call that callback because the script file that comes back is essentially a method call to process results and passing in the results of the data. So that's really the main change. I had to add it here as well on my paging and continuation because I'm going to be uh, calling again. So I need the format equals JSON and the callback equals question mark. My server implementation, as I said, recognizes these uh, parameters and pads that or wraps the JSON result in that method call. And so what this allows us to do is the jQuery API under the covers recognizes that this is a JSONP request. It will go ahead and make that request cross domain. We don't worry about the pop-ups for the user or any of the security issues that come along with that. So it involves work on the server as well as uh, making some changes here. If we look at the data JS implementation, this is where we were getting our error. I'm simply going to come in and set these three properties on the OData default HTTP client before I start using it. So this is in my uh, document ready function, default HTTP client. So the format query string, I tell it, well, put format equals JSON, dollar format equals JSON. The callback parameter name is dollar callback. That's what the server is expecting. And enable JSONP callback equals true. So that, by adding that, if I save now, now we can go back out and look at our web page. We'll view in browser. Notice now it works. The drop downs populate. I didn't have to change the query strings or the get JSON or the rather the read calls, the OData read calls. It just understood that I wanted to do JSONP from these settings, and all of these calls look exactly the same, just the OData reads with the same URIs and it handles that for me. So they both end up under the covers working very similarly. With the data.js, we just set some properties on the default HTTP client. With the jQuery, when we're using it raw, we're going to use the query string itself to pass those things in and be explicit about that. Now, as I said, this is calling out to another server. There's some security risk. It's recommended you do this over SSL. So you avoid any man in the middle attacks, you trust the server that you're calling, all that good stuff. Uh, and again, works for calling out to get 
data because it can wrap in that JavaScript function, but doesn't work for posting information. So uh, very helpful if you're trying to pull data from various servers, but it doesn't help you build a full uh, CRUD system against those remote systems. For that, you might use a proxy service on your local server. So you call back to your server, and then the server, with no browser restrictions, makes a call to that service.